Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. So this week didn't turn out really well for me, <laughs> radio-wise. And it's not from the lack of trying. So the place we are visiting today is called uh, Mont Noir, Black Mound or Black Mountain. It's not, uh, it's not very tall, I mean, it's not really a mountain, but, you know, it's a hill, I guess, and uh, it's pretty nice for hiking. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And on top of the uh, Mont Noir, we have the house of uh, famous French writer Marguerite Yourcenar, who actually lived in the US. She sure had a nice property. Nothing like a long walk in the rain. Yesterday the propagation was totally out. There was a solar storm that uh, wreaked havoc on the HF bands and pretty much all the bands were closed. Now for those who don't know what closed mean for a band, it doesn't mean someone closed it. <laughs> it's just that the propagation, the conditions are not favorable to making contact and radio waves don't skip. So, of course, uh, contacts are limited to a local to regional range. So, this is plan B. Nice little park in Lille. Lots of people though, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'll try to find a place where I can set up. I just finished uh, teaching my uh, self-defense class, and uh, so I'm just going to take the opportunity here to uh, set up my radio. I hope it's not going to rain again, but I just felt a couple drops. <laughs> not a good sign. Today I'm going to be using the uh, Chameleon Hybrid Micro along with the whip and the ground spike. The reason I really like the ground spike is that, well, of course it gives you a good ground so you have a good electrical connection with the ground and near the water, like here, it should be a good advantage. I really like this setup because it's so quick to deploy. It is a compromise, a short whip antenna, but you know, it does work pretty well. So, and it's very simple. It is the antenna I take with me every time when I don't have much time and I'm not quite sure which antenna to use. I'm using the uh, 4S tuner simply because it provides me with an indication of my SWR and it does have a bridge, so I'm not risking damaging my radio. I have uh, eight AA cells and I brought you guys my Weber MTR and I have my uh, Kent key which is pretty heavy but uh, it works pretty well twenty meters so I first have to uh, choose the inductor here for maximum noise but I'm not getting that much noise though that's kind of concerning now I get uh, some red LED and a little bit of green. Okay, no, no green here. A little bit here. My goal is to minimize the uh, red LED. Okay, now I'm getting more green than red. And <laughs> that's really what I'm looking for. I found a decent match, not the best, but... I'm not hearing a peep, nothing, no signal anywhere. Well, and that certainly explains the problem. No propagation, nothing. We have a geomagnetic storm going on. So this is going to be more or less a site update. First thing, I, uh, for the second time, I'm thinking of selling my KX2. Now it's an excellent radio, but uh, I just don't have the money right now to do anything else and I, I need it for uh, other projects. And the fact is that I'm not using it much because it's so nice and I don't want to damage it. So it's almost too much radio for me. Now this is going to be towards uh, European buyers because of the VAT, the value added tax. Although they don't add any value, they just add cost. When I received my KX2, I had to write a check for more than $300, 300 euros, so about $340 to the postman 
Otherwise, he wouldn't give me my packet. So, talk about theft. But this is the reason why, uh, for someone in the US, it would be better to just go to Aircraft and buy one there brand new. Although mine is almost new, I haven't used it much, but uh, I still want to get, uh, you know, at least uh, 700 euros for it. And uh, I'm not going to get that in the US. You can buy one brand new. So if anyone is interested, um, let me know. Also this month I uh, need to buy some reloading equipment because the uh, uh, shooting season, uh, you know, sport shooting season is going to start again and that's another, of, uh, another one of my hobbies. I also have a bit of a rant. <laughs> well, it's, it's about the fact that O isn't ocean and M isn't Mexico. It's Mike. And you know what I'm talking about. People who use uh, those words for uh, spelling uh, words. And really, that's very confusing, you know, and I would urge anybody who uses that, who makes up code words that, you know, don't correspond to the international code, uh, to stop doing that. Because, you know, what do I know? If you say Mexico, uh, are you from Mexico? Are you calling from Mexico? Or do you just want to say M? I don't know. Florida, same thing. F for Florida. If you're not in Florida, don't use Florida to spell the letter F. Just use the international code. That's what it's for. It's very simple. It's not hard to learn and it removes confusion and that's the goal of it. The goal of this code is to remove confusion and make letters uh, easier to recognize. If you use things that you make up, it's not going to help anyone. It doesn't make you sound cool. It makes you sound ignorant. So please don't do it. It's, it's very frustrating for a lot of people. Again, a big thank you to all my Patreon subscribers because without them, I couldn't make those videos or I would have to make much less and they would be less interesting because I wouldn't have any gear to try. So uh, please, if you would like to help, uh, that would be awesome. Go check the link at the bottom. Thank you very much. I do have uh, very uh, interesting things coming down the pipe a radio from the Czech Republic that I'm hoping to get soon. Also, a way to communicate over long distances without using a radio and without being detected. I also want to get the uh, one meter elements, uh, Land Rover antennas, and make a five meter, so uh, about, uh, I think it's a 17 feet antenna, a quarter wave on 20 meters, uh, which will be a whip antenna. Uh, so that will be also uh, pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have seen it also, but uh, Hans Summers has released a, well, will release a new kit after his uh, famous QCX, and that's from QRP Labs, the uh, QRP Labs company. So Hans designed a multi-band, I think it's nine or ten bands, transceiver, CW and SSB. That's going to cost only about, presumably, $150. And that's amazing. It's a little bit more than the uh, U-Bit X, uh, micro -bit X radio, but it has a lot of features. And if you know the QCX, uh, you really want this radio because uh, the QCX is already a great radio. Uh, it draws a little bit too much current for my taste, but it can do a lot of things, even whisper and uh, beacon mode. But uh, the new QSX, and that's the name of it, QSX, uh, is an awesome radio. You will be able to plug in a keyboard directly to the radio and use uh, PSK31 or RTTY straight, you know, without a computer. So that's pretty awesome. And it will be, uh, you know, DSP, so digital signal processing. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, I think, uh, a great radio. And I'm certainly going to uh, try to get one as soon as they come out. I do have a list of about 20 plus videos that I want to make and I'll tell you my eBay wish list is longer than a gangbangers rap sheet. <laughs> it's more than a hundred items in there, uh, all for radio, you know, uh, to make new videos. So please, please do uh, go to patreon.com, uh, link below and uh, you know, if you can help me out with a couple of things, that'd be awesome. I have a couple of videos I could have posted these past two weeks, but I decided that they were just not good enough. I want to maintain a certain level of quality, uh, good information for you guys, so I decided not to post. Even this one, I'm not happy about posting, but I couldn't leave you all in the dark. So stay tuned for some awesome videos coming up. 
One I forgot to mention will be about crossband repeaters. And the second installment of that will be epic. Now, these things take time and efforts, but I'm working on it. Have a good one.